all in a market. Obviously, these webinars are more fun on a day like today when the market, uh, the S&P was up 18 points. I don't look talk about the Dow anymore. The Dow is in never, never land with these new changes they've made. But the S&P up almost 1%. Uh, there's an old saying in Wall Street, never confuse brains with a bull market. And uh, about two months ago, we started doing a series of webinars on how to make money in volatile markets, because obviously what we've just experienced in the stock market is a lot different than what we had experienced for the last two years preceding it. So there are going to be a couple of themes that are going to keep repeating themselves throughout this webinar. Uh, First and foremost is that fundamentals matter. Even though I'm known for my technical indicators that measure supply and demand, check and oscillator, check and money flow, I always knew that fundamentals drove the market. I was just looking for a quick and dirty way to monitor the big players because the institutions look at fundamentals and the technicals are a great way, particularly money flow, to see what they're doing. Second theme that's going to run through this webinar is that patterns repeat over and over and over again. I know Fausto talks about this in his educational work. Really important. You're going to see multiple examples, I believe, in education through repetition. Uh, another concept, stocks go through personality changes. You really have to have some tools that zero in on when stocks have changed character, and we're going to show you how to do that very, very easily. And then finally, we're going to talk about playing defense. Very important, too much time is spent playing offense in trading. The key to making money is keeping your profits and avoiding mistakes. We're going to go obviously go into the offensive side of things. So with that, let's begin. Uh, a little disclaimer, Chaken Analytics not registered with any federal or state agency. All of the ideas on this webinar are meant for an educational purposes only, not specific recommendations. Although, my God, you could have made a lot of money from our webinars over the last three months. Uh, but you're responsible uh, completely for your own investment decisions. So having said that, I know Fausto talks about uh, a winner's state of mind. So what can Chaken Analytics add to a winner's state of mind? Chaken Analytics helps you find the winners both on the long and the short side. It's like a GPS for traders. And it works for stocks, it works for options, it also works for your 401k plan. So just as a, a sort of uh, test of, of the interest level here, um, if you invest in your 401k plan in stocks in addition to trading, could you please type a Y in the chat box? All right, so I see that a number of you also invest. Uh, we're going to focus on both the investment ideas that work. They also work from a trading point of view. They work from a swing trading point of view, and they're great for options traders. So uh, how, do, how does Check and Analytics do this? Well, we help you know the fundamentals without being a research analyst. Fundamental analysis takes a long time. I don't have the time to do it. I've done fundamental research in my time, but you can do it on one, two, or three stocks. Try doing it on a few thousand stocks, and you realize how difficult it is. And there are 5,000 liquid names traded in the U.S. markets. Chicken Analytics helps you know the technicals without being a market technician. Now, I know a lot of you are technicians. This is a quick and dirty way to get a verification of what you're seeing in your technical indicators. And Chaikin Analytics helps you benefit from the Chaikin Power Gauge Rating, which is a proven quantitative model that helps you know what the potential for a stock is without having to do the math. Finally, we pinpoint profitable exits and entries with Chaikin Buy and Sell Signals. We'll see tons of them in the course of the webinar. You can also use candlestick signals. I know a lot of candlestick patterns work very well with Chaikin. You may have your own favorite systems and indicators having to do with Bollinger Bands and what have you. It all works as a whole. The key thing is that as, when you get as many things lining up as possible, that's when you end up with the odds on your side. So the biggest problem we face as traders is information overload. It's also true in our lives, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, email, and all these financial websites to say nothing of the talking heads on CNBC and the headlines in the newspaper. And they're all distractions. And Wall Street will find any way imaginable to shake you out of your position. So that's why we're going to talk about conviction in a second. So the key thing is how do you focus in the age of distraction? 
Well, our solution is Chaikin Analytics for both iPad and desktop. We're going to use the iPad slides in this webinar deck. When we switch to Q&A mode, we'll go to the live desktop app running in a container, also runs in a browser. Now, here's a sort of sneak peek on the type of stocks that Chaikin Analytics can help you find. This is a one-year chart of Dr. Pepper Snapple. Power gauge rating is on the bottom as a, in this case, green yellow ribbon. It can also be red or bearish. This power gauge has indicated positive bullish potential for Dr. Pepper over the last 12 months. Remember that yellow zigzag. This is really key because right above the Chaikin power gauge rating is Chaikin relative strength. We've taken numbers and converted them into a red-green heat map. So it's very easy to make a judgment about whether a stock is outperforming or underperforming the market. We'll see how critical that is. Finally, check in money flow measures the flow of institutional funds in and out of the market and the signals. There's your, there's your real edge. You've got to have an entry method. Traders need entries. Otherwise, you're faced with uh, that old Dr. John song that I love. I've been in the right place, but it must have been the wrong time. I mean, how many of you have been in stocks that ultimately went up but bought them wrong and uh, either got shaken out of them or lost a lot of sleep at night? It happens all the time. So here's the stock, Dr. Pepper. It's in a strong industry group. As you see, we think that's a very important uh, component of making money. Technicals are strong. Uh, there happens to have been some takeover chatter on the stock in the last few days. Uh, so. Here's a stock that's had everything going for it. It's been in a big uptrend. Most stocks broke that uptrend uh, in the decline through a week ago Wednesday when the S&P went down to 1806. Uh, They've regrouped, particularly the strong ones. So this is all about focus because focus leads to conviction. And uh, if you've read Jack Schwager's Market Wizard books, and how many of you out there have read those books, please type Y in the uh, chat box if you have. Well, a lot of good traders have pursued their education by reading Jack Schwager's books, and there's a common theme that runs through it. Every successful trader, hedge fund manager that he's interviewed has a plan and they stick to it. And that's what focus is all about. And focus leads to conviction. And conviction is absolutely critical because, as I said, the headlines, the talking heads will do everything they can to shake you out of your positions. It used to be that the specialists on the floor did that. They don't have the power anymore with electronic trading. Uh, but you need conviction. You need a plan, whether it's the Chaikin methodology or one that you're following through Fausto or that you've developed on your own. You need a focus to make money in the stock market. We've encapsulated the Chaikin methodology in this pyramid. At the top of the pyramid is the power gauge rating. It looks like the gas gauge on your car. It goes from very bearish to very bullish. Right underneath that, industry group strength. We're going to look at how ETFs can lead you to the strong industry groups. At the bottom of the pyramid is this base of five technical indicators that work very, very well with this quantitative power gauge model. So the power gauge tells you the fundamentals, the technicals confirm them. And right in the middle of the sweet spot are the buy and sell signals, and we'll see a lot of examples of that. So what is the Chaikin power gauge? Well, first and foremost, it's reliable. It's a simple display, but don't confuse simple with simplistic because it's a powerful predictor of where a stock is headed over the next three to six months. I like to say that it's like a Chevrolet with a Ferrari engine under the hood. And the reason it's so powerful is because it's based on 20 factors grouped into four components that institutional investors look at every day. I've worked with institutional investors and traders for 40 years. I looked over their shoulder in the course of learning how to help them, and I saw what they worked with. I was at Drexel Burnham when they had a quantitative department. I saw what their quant department was turning out. So 85% of the power gauge rating, which tells you a stock's potential to go up or down over the next three to six months, is fundamental. 
It does the heavy lifting for you. You've got to know the fundamentals in order to make money in the stock market. If you just depend on technicals, you're only seeing a small shadow of the picture. Also, the fundamentals are based on reality. And every example in this webinar is either something that I blogged, tweeted on, or made my bullish or bearish stock of the week in my weekly market letter called Market Insights, which comes bundled with Chaikin Analytics. I believe a stock has to pass the smell test before I make it a bullish or bearish stock of the week. And this week's bearish stock was Coach. The week before it was Amazon. I do a little digging to see if the rating reflects the real world. And we'll see this in a minute when we look at the first bullish stock. So 35% of, of the factors are value metrics, the financials. That's what Warren Buffett looks at. Really critical price to sales ratio. If you pay too much for a dollar of revenue, you're on a high wire with no safety net. And all the stocks that have tanked in the last six months on, the, on balance had very high price to sales ratios. Earnings, that's what a Kramer would look at. Technicals, only 15% of the model, all proprietary. Then the secret sauce, expert opinions. Analyst estimate revisions drive the market. They key off earnings surprises, and so do the analyst ratings. So three of the 20 factors are very sensitive. The financial factors don't change that much. Debt to equity, price to book, don't change. What does change are what the analysts are doing and saying, what the short sellers are doing, very important, the short sellers are very smart. When they're increasing their short positions, that has a bearish impact on the power gauge. Finally, insider activity. We watch what insiders are doing from a buy perspective. Sorry, I've got a new Mac and the mouse is very sensitive. When insiders are buying their stock, they're sending you a powerful message. And the message is, but if you know that message, please type it in the chat box. Why do insiders buy their own stock? Well, the answer is pretty clear. They buy their own stock because they think it's going up. They're already well compensated with options and a big golden parachute and retirement plans, big salaries. So if they take out their wallet and buy a stock for their own account, with their own money, they're sending you a message that that stock's going up and they think it's going up now. Otherwise, they don't have to do it and they can wait. So when insiders are buying, that's a very bullish uh, component of the power gauge rating. Now, all of these back-tested results are on our website, but I wanted to show you how important the power gauge rating is. On the left, back-tested results. Now, you'll never be on a webinar that shows you a bad back-test. Never heard anyone say, I've got a model, it's not working very well, but it's going to start working soon. So all bath tests look good, but it's informative. Russell 3000, the top 428 stocks, up 23% a year on average over the test period of 11 years. Here's the more important one, the very bearish stocks. Whoops, I'm going to go back. Very bearish stocks, down 3%, 428 names. If you're in the very bearish stocks on the long side, you're going to destroy your portfolio. If you're in the very bullish stocks, you've got a shot at making 20% a year. Now, what's the real world performance been? Well, we introduced the model in January of 11. This is through June of 14. It's been a straight up bull market. Very bullish stocks, very similar, up 20%. 428 names in the Russell 3000, both large, mid, and small. Even the very bearish stocks were up. They were up 10%, but that's only half what the bullish stocks were up. There's an old expression in Wall Street, a rising tide lifts all boats. That's what's happened up until the last two months. But those bearish stocks were still up a third less than the S&P. So the power gauge works. It's worked in back testing. It's worked in real time and it'll help you put the odds on your side. Now, we've developed a pattern that we call the classic bull. We're using Southwest Air LUV as the example, and we're going to blow that up and show you what it looks like. But basically, bullish power gauge rating. How do we know it? It's on the bottom. You can judge for yourself whether this would have worked for you in your short-term trading, your swing trading, or in your investment account. And I'm a strong believer that when you trade options, you need to know where the underlying stock is going. There's no better way to know that than the Chaikin power gauge rating combined with the two technical indicators we're going to talk about. 
I love stocks that are in an uptrend. I'm not a big bottom fisher. Strong performance relative to the market. That's the indicator right here above the power gauge. Check and money flow is strong. It tells you that the institutions are buying the stock. Finally, look for a buy signal in whatever methodology you use. So as we're looking at these examples, keep this pattern in mind. Richard Wyckoff, 90 years ago, great market strategist and technician, developed an idealized pattern for the way stocks move up and down. They come out of an accumulation or basing phase, they break out, they pull back, rally to new highs, consolidate, and so forth. When they break out of a base, we call that a bullish personality change, and we have an indicator that tells you that it's happening in real time, not looking back on some Fibonacci or Elliott wave pattern after the fact. So keep this in mind because the same patterns that Wyckoff spotted 90 years ago are working in the marketplace today. Wyckoff is taught in technical analysis departments. It's being used by some very, very smart technicians. And this is a pattern that is based on human nature, and human nature hasn't changed in 100 years. It gives me the confidence to be on a webinar like this and tell you with conviction that these techniques, which have worked for me for the last 30 five years are going to continue working into the future because they've been working for over 100 years. So let's take a closer look at Southwest Air. It's a classic bull. Power gauge rating is bullish. When the relative strength to the market is green and the power gauge rating is bullish, it means that the market is agreeing with the model. Remember this, none of us are bigger than the market. Not Fausto, not John Najarian, not Doug Cass, not Jim Cramer. The market rules. And when the market and the model agree, you get price acceleration. So let's just look a little more closely at this chart. Breakout back here at the 16 level in October of 13. Money flow was very strong. And you got a second breakout here in January. Money flow was strong again. All when relative strength and the power gauge were bullish. And then you get a buy signal. We call this an oversold buy. I owe this one to Larry Williams. An eight-day low, very simple, with the power gauge bullish. You get oversold. A good entry point, not meant to be a pinpoint buy it now. It's never going to go down entry. It's a low-risk entry. And when you see those in a stock where the market is agreeing with the model, you get price acceleration. And as traders, that's what you're looking for. One final point on this chart. This is a powerful tip. Shake and Money Flow is on StockCharts.com. It's on TradeMonster, who I know partners with Fausto. When you get a pullback in the market, normally money flow goes red. When you get a pullback and then a buy signal and money flow has stayed green or positive above zero, that's a powerful indication that the institutions are not selling that stock on the weakness. They're actually accumulating it. That's how the money flow, which is based on 21 days, stays green. Contrast that to what happened in September when the market sold off dramatically. Money flow was already weak when you got that oversold buy signal. Sometimes they work right away. This one worked for four days, and then it just couldn't help it. When Ebola surfaced, all the airlines dropped because people were afraid that air traffic would drop. So Southwest and Delta and United, all with bullish ratings, got caught up in that. Now, I talked earlier about how I like a name, and I've featured Southwest as bullish stock of the week. I wanted to pass the smell test. So very quickly, two reasons why Southwest Air passed the smell test a year ago when we started focusing on it and recommending it. Number one, their biggest variable cost is jet fuel. And we all know where the, where the price of oil has been going. So that's a big tailwind to their earnings. Second thing is they bought AirTrans two years ago. International flights, Southwest was all domestic. They've now rebranded it all as Southwest. They fly to Europe, Canada, Latin America. It's a big fundamental improvement in their business. So Southwest passed the smell test. Everything lined up. This is what you're looking for. Now let's look at a classic bear. Mirror image. I'm using Pandora as the classic bear. Power gauge rating is bearish. That's on the bottom. Turned red 
back here in March, the stock's taken a big tumble in a market that's been making new highs. It's in a downtrend. Can never get above this brown line, double smooth 200-day exponential average, proprietary taken trend indicator. Relative performance is weak. The market's confirming the model. Started in March. Again, sorry about the sensitivity of the mouse. Uh, money flow is weak, and you get a sell signal in Chaikin Analytics. Now, you've got a sell signal right before this big drop in the stock here just recently, and let's take a closer look. Before we do that, here's the Wyckoff pattern on the downside. Distribution, same patterns in reverse. When a stock breaks that distribution area, that's a bearish personality change, and we're going to get very clear on what that is and how you spot it in a minute. So here's our classic bear, Whole Foods. Great place to shop, terrible stock. It's had a series of earnings disappointments back here in November 13, then again in late January, then again in April. Gap down. Biggest nightmare for traders. Stock your long gaps down. That's why you've got to get stocks with bearish power gauge ratings out of your portfolio. Back here in April, I made this my bearish stock of the week, and you'll see what happened in a minute. Just triggered an overbought sell signal. Now the stock was up today because the market was up. This is a great stock to be buying puts on, in my opinion, when it rallies up like it's doing here. This stock can't even break through that September peak. It's clearly in a downtrend, underperforming the market. The market is agreeing with the model. Back here in November of 13, you had a negative personality change when the relative strength went from green or bullish to red or bearish. So this is the type of stock you want to be looking at to play the downside. Shorts, puts, Great during earnings season. You'll see a number of examples of that at the end of the webinar. So what happened after I made that my bearish stock of the week in April? Well, we got a testimonial. I put on a Whole Foods put trade, which was your alternative bear trade of the week in Market Insights. Today I locked up 190% profit in two days. Consider me a loyal user. Now. What we've been looking at is what we're now calling the dynamic duo, Chaikin power gauge rating and Chaikin relative strength. Now, I know a lot of you think that John and Pete Najarian are the dynamic duo, but actually before them it was Batman and Robin. So what does this dynamic duo do for us as traders? Well, the power gauge rating analyzes the most predictive fundamental factors that the institutions are looking at every day. Remember, they don't all look at each of those 20. They have different styles. But collectively, that's what they're looking at. Relative strength, on the other hand, compares the stock to the market over the past 26 weeks. So it's a reality check on the fundamentals. It's displayed as a red-green indicator, as we've seen. And it stands alone as a bullish or a bearish indicator, even if the power gauge is neutral, as it has been in stocks like Tesla uh, and and. Uh, stocks on the downside as well, if the relative strength is clearly bullish or bearish, that is very important information. And the reason it's important information is that institutional investors drive the market and they're always measured against some benchmark index. So if an institutional investor, whether it's a hedge fund or the guy running the um, uh, Fidelity Magellan Fund, if they're position in stocks which are underperforming the market, that does two things. It hurts their compensation and it hurts their assets under management. So they're religious about culling stocks from their portfolio that are underperforming the market. Unless you're Warren Buffett with a five to ten year time horizon, you don't have time to wait for the IBMs and the Coca-Colas of the world like Warren Buffett's prepared to wait. So institutional investors constantly getting rid of stocks with underperformance looking for stocks that are going to outperform. So superior returns come from stocks that outperform the market because they continue to outperform the market. And studies have shown this over and over again. Now, here's an example of a stock that's been outperforming the market. It had a personality change. We're looking at a one-year chart of Kroger, a big supermarket chain. They're eating Whole Foods lunch. Instead of buying Whole Foods, Back here in February, March, 
above 50, you could have been buying Kroger if you wanted to be in the supermarket business. They also bought Harris Teeter, this fabulous specialty chain that does compete with Whole Foods in North Carolina and now nationwide. So there was a smell test again. Kroger is doing everything to transform their business. Power gauge was bullish in February. Relative strength turned bullish. That's your personality change. Stock moved up into an uptrend, and it's been making new highs with buy signals along the way. So this is an example of a bullish personality change. Now, the key to making money in all markets is spotting personality changes. And I love this slide. I just developed this last week. There's a young Jack Nicholson on the left looking as good as I've ever seen him. Actually looks happy. Never seen him very happy in a movie. On the right, we all know where that one comes from. And that's scary. And so the key to making money in the market is to know when a stock's undergoing a personality change. And we make it easy for you. When relative strength changes color, the stock's undergone a personality change. That's particularly powerful when it confirms the shaken power gauge rating. Why? Because it means the market is agreeing with the model. And then finally, check and money flow can confirm a personality change by telling you that the institutions are either buying a bullish personality change or selling that stock if it's a bearish one. So let's focus on playing good defense. Here, in, I, I moved to Philadelphia eight and a half years ago. We had a great defensive coordinator for the Eagles, and they went to the Super Bowl in 06. Sadly, he died of cancer. I think his name was Jimmy Johnson. And the defense went downhill, and the Eagles have never been the same. Uh, those of you in Chicago know how important a defense is to winning football. But in the stock market, defense is critical. The reason it's critical is because every mistake you make in the stock market has a huge impact on your bottom line. If you lose 50% on a stock or an options position, you've got to make 100% on the next trade to make that money back. So you need to use stops. Cannot let one or two big losses destroy all the good work you've done in the course of a year, all the education, the learning that you've done from Fausto, from people like me on your own. You've got to play good defense by using stops. Next. You've got to get stocks with bearish power gauge ratings out of your portfolio. If you're long stocks or trading them from the long side with a bearish rating, you're putting the odds against you instead of in your favor. Then finally, you can play good defense by turning lemons into lemonade, taking stocks with bearish ratings and finding put buying opportunities or spots to go short. And here's a perfect example of that, Pandora. Pandora had that bearish personality change. It's rallied up a couple of times. It triggered some sell signals here ahead of the earnings. This happens to be a money flow sell that happened the day of. And Pandora was down when I took this slide at another 3% yesterday on top of what you're seeing on the screen. So that's how you turn lemons into lemonade, and it really works during earnings season. A lot of people are reluctant to trade during earnings season. They're nervous about the volatility, and, the, and you should be. But if you have an edge, you can take advantage of the power gauge's potential to find winners during earnings season, because stocks with a bearish power gauge rating are much more likely to report a negative earnings surprise, and as we'll see, stocks with bullish power gauge rating are much more likely to report a positive earnings surprise and the market responds to that appropriately. So let's look at another stock where you could have made money on the downside, turning lemons into lemonade. Lumber liquidators, home builders not doing well. The big ones, Toll Brothers, KBH, doing poorly. Yesterday you got an announcement about September pending home sales. It was very disappointing. In spite of low interest rates, something's wrong with the home building industry in America. Lumber liquidators obviously supplies home builders, also do-it-yourselfers, but their business is in the tank, and they've said so. 
And here I, is a, an example of how patterns repeat. They pre-warned and then they reported a very negative quarter and the stock gap down 20%. This big base never filled the gap and they did it again. Negative earnings report, stock gaps down big time. Go back here. Power gauge has been bearish since November. Stock was well above 100. Negative personality change in late November. Stock's now in a downtrend. It's really important that you notice how these two link together and you can spot them using the combination of power gauge and relative strength. The signals in the main, two-thirds of them work. These have been very profitable short sale signals. Great spot to buy puts. Industry group is weak. Technicals are weak. Money flow is weak. Everything lines up. Let's look at an old Warren Buffett expression. Does anybody out there know who Warren Buffett's favorite person in the world is? If you do, please type Y or the man's name in your question box. I'm not actually seeing the question boxes, Fausto, but I'm going to assume someone out there knows that Warren Buffett's favorite person is Ted Williams, legendary baseball player. The reason is Ted Williams was the most disciplined hitter ever in baseball. Also hit for, I think, the second highest lifetime average. Second only to someone like Honus Wagner or Ty Cobb. The reason Ted Williams is a great hitter is he was very disciplined. He had a very narrow strike zone. You could see that ball and he didn't swing at anything outside the strike zone. So Warren Buffett's come up with an analogy for the stock market. He says the stock market, unlike baseball, doesn't call balls and strikes. You can wait for your pitch. You can wait for the fat pitch when everything's lined up to take your shot, to put on your trade, to go long, to add to your 401k plan. You don't have to swing at every pitch in the stock market. Really, really important concept. Now let's look at how to play offense. And in most of the webinars we've been doing for the last two years, playing offense well meant knowing what to buy because uh, it's pretty easy to make money in a bull market. As I said, there's a saying that says, don't confuse brains with a bull market. You get into a market like we've been in recently, and it's not only important to know what to buy, but you have to know when and how to buy. So we'll look at a couple of examples of knowing when and how to buy. First, let's think a little differently. Let's take a look at Apple. Apple had a bullish personality change in April. Power gauge turned bullish uh, just before that when they reported a better than expected quarter. iPhone sales surprised to the upside. Stock went on a joyride, and, but it pulled back, and you had a chance to use this oversold buy signal, eight-day low, as an entry point. Now, when Apple pulled back here in September, right after the iPhone launch, iPhone 6. You had an oversold buy signal right at this yellow arrow, and money flow had stayed green. Contrast that to what happened just a month later when Apple broke below the long-term trend line. Um, everybody was selling everything back there on Wednesday two weeks ago. So you have to know how to buy in a downtrend or a volatile market. It's different. You can't just randomly assume stocks are going to bounce. In this case, they did big time, but we'll see some examples of other stocks where you had to endure a little pain to make some money. Here's Skyworks. We're looking at the Apple ecosystem. I identified Skyworks back in June and July as a stock with this pattern of everything lining up, bullish power gauge rating, outperforming the market, very bullish check in money flow. It had had a series of upward gaps because they had had positive earnings surprises in eight of the previous nine quarters and a whole series of oversold buy signals. Remember, when you have the market agreeing with the model, you get price acceleration. And as traders, that's what you want. If you're trading options with time decay, you want price acceleration as close as possible to your entry point. Remember the personality change. It happened to Skyworks back in 2013. I got interested in it in mid-July and I made it my bullish stock of the week. We'll see an example of how that played out at the end of the webinar. But Skyworks had done something interesting. They had raised their guidance 
prior to the earnings. A month before the earnings were due out and the stock spiked up from 47 to 54, Skyworks basically said to Wall Street, your estimates are too low. Now guess what? On Wednesday, two weeks ago, they did it again. They guided higher for the earnings that are due out in early November. So they've said to Wall Street, we're killing it. We're knocking the cover off the ball. Your estimates are too low. And Skyworks bounced from 43 all the way to 56. That's what can happen in a volatile market if you have the discipline and believe in a system. Now let's look at a really sad story in the Apple ecosystem. GTAT was supposed to make sapphire glass to replace Gorilla Glass in the iPhone 6. Stock up bid up to a double top at 20. Clearly something was wrong. The power gauge was bearish, had a negative personality change, and look at the check and money flow. Before the iPhone launch, Someone knew something. The institutions were selling this stock like it was going out of business. And in fact, sadly, it did go out of business. The company filed for bankruptcy because when the iPhone 6 came out, there was no sapphire glass. But preceding that was a momentum breakdown sell signal, one of our six sell signals. So if you follow the discipline, sometimes you get lucky. And you certainly would have been out of the stock ahead of the bankruptcy filing. Now, there was a lot of put buying. John Najarian noted this on his blog. In September and early October, huge put buying in GTAT. Another tip off that something was not right, and sadly the company filed for bankruptcy. So six pairs of buy and sell signals in Shaken Analytics. Here's one more example, Brocade. I love this stock. The reason is they generate enormous cash flow I made it one of my bullish stocks for 2014 when it was trading in January below $9. It's been a choppy stock. The company is buying back up to 25% of their shares. And it's selling at a reasonable PE. It's in the uh, networking business. And it had a huge bounce after dropping from 1090 all the way down to 890 in that big sell-off two weeks ago. Uh, and this stock looks like it's going to make a new high. In fact, today it was up 3% when I pulled this slide. It was up around 1060. It's a company that's turned itself around, and the money flow is telling you the institutions love it in here. Even on this big sell-off, remember that pattern, money flow stayed green or positive. That's a big tip-off. It's a tell that the institutions are buying, not selling the stock. So. Let's just look at the check and basic strategy for buying stocks and see how signals play into that. Strong power gauge rating, a buy signal in check and analytics helps you focus on when to buy and sell stocks. So two examples. Power gauge is bullish. This is Allergan Pharmaceutical. Power gauge has been bullish since October of 13. It's under some takeover pressure from Valiant and Bill Ackman, a hedge fund manager. So it's bullish. What do you do? Well, to make money by trading, you follow the signals. So oversold buy, everything lines up, bullish power gauge, bullish personality change, good money flow, follow the buy signals. In this case, you had an oversold buy signal about five days ago. The stock was 175, uh, traded all the way up close to 188 yesterday. And there was some chatter that Valiant may raise their bid to 200 on the stock. You don't have to know about that if you're following a discipline of power gauge, relative strength, money flow, and signals. Now on the downside, here's coach. You want to minimize your losses with put options. Follow the signals. Stock was down 6% today. This was my bearish stock of the week on Sunday, taking market insights. I knew they were going to report earnings. Before the opening on Tuesday, I actually bought put options yesterday, doubled my money on them, got out on the spike down this morning. If you're long coach and you see an overbought sell signal, get out of it. If you're looking for put buying opportunities, wonderful stock, fallen angel, a lot of competition, Kate Spade, Michael Coors, and the like and follow the signal. So notice that there was a sell signal before the earnings came out. The stock was trading around 36. The low today 
was a new low for the year down around 33.29. May go even lower as Wall Street analysts lower their estimates. Remember, analyst estimate revisions drive stock prices. So the big question that came up when we introduced Chaikin Analytics in January of 13 was, these signals are great, but how do we find them? To answer that user feedback, we created our dashboard, our alerts dashboard, which shows all the signals buy and sell in any list. Now, I follow 120 names because I do webinars and write a market letter. You can make as many lists as you want in Chaikin, but don't follow that many stocks. Follow 20 or 30 stocks and know them really well. You can have a buy list and a sell list, that's fine. But you can see the dashboard alerts on industry groups, on the SP500, but most importantly, your my stocks list. So on October 23rd, when I did a webinar, I took a snapshot of my dashboard alerts. And I had had a buy signal on Allergan. We saw that that stock moved up. Ryder, Edwards Scientific, Edwards Life Sciences. And a sell signal on Triple D, which I've been bearish on for since January. So let's see how Edwards played out. Medical products, bullish power gauge. It had a positive personality change back in April. You had some buy signals along the way. And you got this buy signal we saw on the chart there at roughly 103.33. Well, what happened to Edwards? They reported better than expected earnings. The stock spiked up 12 points, and it's kept going. It was trading at 118 today. Now, my wife, who's never traded, Sandy, who coordinates our sales and marketing, never traded a stock in her life. Always mutual funds did very well with um, Peter Lynch, Magellan, Bill Miller. Two years ago, she started buying stocks in her 401k and in her personal account based on this power gauge discipline. She doesn't complicate things. She looks at the power gauge, the relative strength and the money flow, and then monitors for a signal. She bought Edwards at 103. I wish I was that smart. And I think she took her profit here at 118 today because it really has spiked up, and very often these spikes lead to profit taking. Now, Triple D, on the other hand, is the classic bear. Power gauge rating turned bearish here at 78. Negative personality change, a series of sell signals, and you had another sell signal here ahead of a unanticipated event, a pre-warning. They're going to report on, this, on November 10th, but their business is so bad, 3D printing is hot, but Triple D is not. So they pre-warned to the downside, the exact opposite of what Skyworks is doing. The stock was 43, it gapped all the way down to 36. That's what a discipline will do for you. Sometimes you get lucky and you benefit almost immediately. Now, concept of industry group relative strength is all about having a tailwind, putting the wind at your back. So strong industry groups or ETFs put the wind at your back and that equates to profits on the long side. So let's see how you find strong industry groups and sectors in Chaikin. Well, we have a wonderful list manager, and you'll see that in the desktop app. And by clicking on the nine spider sectors, you see them ranked by power gauge rating. Healthcare sector and biotech industry group have been market leaders now for four to five months. So if I'm looking for stocks to play on a rebound, I want to look at a strong sector and a strong group. First, I want to look at the chart. So here's the XLV Healthcare ETF. All these stocks are in the S&P 500. And I see that, in fact, this ETF is in an uptrend, and it made a new high today. How many stocks have made new highs? Well, most of them have been in the biotech and the healthcare group. You had a bullish personality change in the ETF back in August. And since then, it's been a very strong stock. Obviously, as the market waterfalled, everything got carried down with it. There was a big concern that hospitals wouldn't be able to reclaim their costs if a lot of people with Ebola checked in. That's proven to be, fortunately, not the case. Let's pray that it stays that way. But healthcare has been the place to find winners. So what do we do? We go to the alerts dashboard. Edward Scientific, oversold by 103.33. We saw that that went to 118 roughly two weeks later. 
Regeneron, oversold buy at 343. This one hasn't been so easy, but it's been very profitable. So remember that price, 343, October 13. Regeneron got caught up in that waterfall and dropped all the way down to 320. Now, I'm not saying that your stops would have kept you in there, but what a riot it's been because this went from 320 up to 404 in just seven trading sessions. Preceding that, a bullish personality change. If you're in the right industry group, in this case drugs are neutral, but it's in the healthcare sector, wonderful things can happen. Another stock in the healthcare sector is community health, managed care. Had been bearish, relative strength to the market was bearish, the stock was neutral. Remember I said relative strength stands alone. So when you trade up above, I apologize for this, this mouth is super sensitive. Trade above the 21 day exponential in a stock that has negative relative strength and then trade back below the 21 day average. That's a relative strength sell signal. We had five of them and they all work. And then you had a personality change. Back here in May, power gauge turned bullish and then the market started confirming the model and the personality change was to the upside and you've had a couple of relative strength and oversold buy signals and here's a stock that moved back toward its high just the other day um, when the market rallied. Big beneficiary of Obamacare. Now sometimes you follow the discipline and you get really lucky like you would on the downside with GTAT. Here's Care Fusion. It was spun out of Cardinal Health two years ago. They didn't think it was worthy of keeping. Company has on its own become a fabulous company. Power Gauge has been bullish off and on for a year, but you had this personality change. Until the market agrees with the model, it's dead money. So when it goes into an uptrend in May, you've had a bullish personality change. All this taking money flow is telling you that the institutions are buying it. You look for buy signal. So oversold buy signal, go long. Buy puts, it's great for swing trading. Add it to your 401k plan. And sometimes you get lucky. Oversold buy signal down to the lower volatility band, and then seven days later, Beckton Dickinson made a bid 30% above the market, and Care Fusion gapped up. Sometimes lucky follows hard work. So now let's look at some of the sector and broad market ETFs and how Chaikin can help you. Well, you've got to decide small cap, tech, or large cap. So IMW, I'm sorry, IWM, Triple Q, Spiders. A lot of people out there I know trade these broad market ETFs. How do we help you? Relative strength. The IWM has been underperforming the market since late March. Small caps have not done well. In September when the S&P made a new high at the 2018 level, Small caps were 5% lower, 4% lower than the previous peak, and they just kept going down, and you just triggered a relative strength breakdown signal. When and if the market experiences any pullbacks, small caps are going to lead to the downside, and you don't want to bet on them leading to the upside. Instead, you want to go with the triple Qs, which is trading back up now above our long-term trend line with today's price action outperforming the market, so bullish personality change, a lot of money flowing into that ETF here on this big move up. If you're trading broad-based ETFs, you want to look for the ones that are outperforming the market. And in the sector space, you want to avoid the ETFs like the XLE Energy Spider, which are underperforming the market, negative personality change, relative strength breakdown signal back here in late August. If you had taken the clue, you could have avoided a lot of the pain that energy stocks have inflicted on investors who didn't see that personality change coming. So we're going to end the webinar with some current stuff and some oldies. Winning plays during earnings season. I strongly believe that the Chaikin Power Gauge rating can help you make big outsized profits during earnings season because stocks with bearish power gauge ratings report negative earnings surprises 
Stocks with bullish power gauge ratings, positive earnings surprises, that knowledge alone gives you an edge. So you need to know when earnings are coming out. We help you do that. And you need to know what the power gauge rating is. If volatility is too high for the out-of-the-money puts, as they often are in earnings season, you can buy an in-the-money put. You cut down your leverage, but you cut down your risk because it'll move almost point for point with the stock. So Skyworks, I mentioned that I made that my bullish stock of the week because I knew they were coming out with earnings. They had pre-warned to the upside, and sure enough, I had gotten a buy signal in there and shaken analytics. Stock gapped up from 47 and changed to 54, pulled back, and went on to make new highs even after the iPhone 6 launch. Why? Because they make chips for the iPhone 6. Got caught up in that big waterfall decline when all the semiconductor stocks went down, but then it triggered an oversold buy signal on an eight-day low down here at about 45, and it rallied all the way to 55. So what happened in July, and how did some of our subscribers make out? Well, we got a testimonial. I'm thrilled that I got the heads up to go long Skyworks before earnings the first week I subscribed to the service. That trade paid for my entire yearly subscription. That came in on July 21st. It was our bullish stock of the week on July 17th. Now let's look at Athena Health. Back in April, when I did a webinar with John Najarian, I highlighted Athena as a stock that had triggered a sell signal ahead of a very negative earnings report when it gapped down from above 120, about 124, all the way to 98. It's been consolidating ever since, but look what happened here in September. You had an overbought sell signal above 130, and then the stock drifted down to 120 in the market weakness. They reported another negative earnings surprise, and the stock gapped down 10 points. Patterns repeat in the stock market. Personality changes happen over and over again. Here you have one in March. Spot these patterns, and you'll make money year in and year out. You don't need Mark Chaikin as a guru or Jim Cramer, Doug Cass. You'll be self-sufficient if you're using tools like this. So now let's look at some very current examples. Netflix. We blogged on this stock two weeks ago and said to sell it ahead of the earnings report. It had just triggered an overbought sell signal, and I felt this was a stock with the potential to have a negative earnings surprise. They had tinkered with their business model just like they did two and a half years ago when the stock dropped from well above 200 down into the 60s. And they increased the price of their subscriptions by a dollar a month. Seems pretty innocuous, but somehow it had an impact on the subscriptions. The stock dropped from 440 over 100 points. And we had subscribers who bought the 390 puts and made 50 times on their money in one day. Now, in case you think that's a rare occurrence, here's something that John Najarian and I collaborated on. This is a chart from August of 12 when I was on Fast Money Halftime Report, and they asked me what I thought of Priceline, and I said, well, the power gauge is bearish and it's underperforming the market. I would sell this stock ahead of tomorrow's earnings because the risk of a bearish earnings surprise is too great. John Najarian said, well, I've been bullish on Priceline, but I'll take another look if Mark Chaikin's bearish. They actually did a reprise on this, first time I've ever seen it, because the stock gapped down 100 points when they disappointed. And John came on the next day and said, Mark Chaikin spooked me. He helped me out because I flipped my position from long to short. I bought some out-of-the-money puts at $1.80. I sold them at 16 or 17. I know they're higher. They actually went to 43 that day. So these things happen more than once. You can find them if you're disciplined and watching for the right things. Focus. It's all about focus and conviction. So now let's go to Amazon. Last week I did a webinar on Thursday night, and Amazon was due to report after the close on Thursday. So it had, had a series of negative earnings surprises. This one in April had caused me to make it a bearish stock of the week. The stock was around 335. It gapped down and went all the way to 280. And I made it my bearish stock of the week again, as we'll see two weeks ago, with the stock at 303, but with the potential to rally with the market. So I put a big question mark. 
The market was agreeing with the model. You had had a negative personality change. This is a fallen angel. It's going to be really hard for Amazon to get into an uptrend. Wall Street is tired of Jeff Bezos' carnival routine. They, they don't make money. Every hardware they, they come out with, the Fire Phone, their tablets, everything but the Kindle, loses money. Wall Street's sick of Amazon and, and their stick. So I didn't know if it would report a negative earnings surprise, but in fact it did. The stock dropped after rallying up to 319 all the way down below 280 in the pre-market. The uh, actual market low was 282. So you can find these names. Now let's look at stocks that are reporting earnings this week. They don't all have bearish power gauge ratings. Yeah, they actually do, uh, except for Gilead. I added that today. So uh, Gilead and Amgen. So Amgen reported after the close yesterday better than expected earnings, had a bullish power gauge. We'll see that in a minute. Coach was my bearish stock of the week. I knew they were reporting Tuesday before the opening. They disappointed. The stock made a new low. Gilead, very bullish power gauge rating, biotech stock, reported after the close today. Now, if you think Wall Street is rational, think twice. Gilead reported almost a 300% increase in profits on more than a double in revenue. Six billion in revenue from the quarter, up from 2.7 billion last year. And the stock's initial reaction was to sell off a bit. It started to regroup. When we started the webinar, uh, instead of being down four, it was only down one. You may get a pullback as people take profits, Great company. They've got a hepatitis C drug that actually cures hepatitis C by all the reports. So this is a stock you want to be aware of. The other stock, Chenier, Murphy, First Solar, Microchip, which started the, in, the semiconductor uh, selling wave, all reporting later this week. There's money to be made on the short side if you can find the right options position. So here's Gilead going into today's earnings, making a new all-time high bullish personality change in June, better than expected earnings. This stock is a winner. It's a growth stock to hold in long-term accounts. A great stock to trade if you buy it right. We had a momentum breakout here when the market was strong in August at a price of 99, went straight up to 109. And here's Amgen, which reported after the close yesterday. Again, bullish personality change, institutions buying the stock. How do we know it? Checking money flow is green, even on the pullbacks. That's a tell. That's a tip-off. Lower volatility band, it's the how to buy in a downtrend. You don't want to buy too quickly. You want to let the market come to you. And if you did, Amgen has rallied from a low of about 127 all the way up to a new high. 156 today, after the earnings were reported, better than expected, I would have expected the stock to run into resistance. Instead, it was up 5% when I drew this chart. Powerful, powerful stock, just like Gilead and Celgene and the biotech group. These things come in clusters, and they go hand in hand with strong industry groups. So one last set of slides. What stocks moved last week? Well, there were fast-moving stocks where Chaikin had you on the right side before the move. Royal Caribbean been a very strong stock. Why did it sell off? People were afraid that cruise traffic would be down because of Ebola fears. Then you got an overbought, oversold buy signal rather, and the stock went from 52 and change all the way to 65. Didn't make a new high. Money flow isn't that strong, but that's an example of getting in ahead of the move using Chaikin. On the downside, Yelp. Power gauge has been bearer since March. You had a negative personality change back here. At that point, you want to be out of the stock, play defense, look for chances to buy put options. You had a sell signal here, overbought sell, prior to a very bearish earnings report. Sell signal came at 70. Notice how the stock was up the day before the earnings came out. That pattern repeats itself. Disappoint Wall Street. Taken to the woodshed, stock gaps down from 70, trades as low as 56. Chaikin would have put you into that trade based on power gauge, money flow, 
and that sell signal ahead of the move. That's how you make money week in and week out, year in and year out, by being prepared with the right tools and putting them to work because you have conviction. So obviously I have conviction in Chaikin Analytics. I'd like as many people as possible to take advantage of this. We had a lot of people on the first webinar we did with Fausto um, three months ago who subscribed to Chaikin Analytics. We've gotten some very positive testimonials. So to make it as painless as possible to use these tools, we have a webinar special. Apologize, Fausto, I didn't change this slide from the Option Monster webinar last night. This is for Cyber Trader University. Webinar special, $15.50. Actually, the price last night was $16.50, so we're giving you guys a better deal. Chakenanalytics.com backslash sign up. The offer code is volatile. Or contact Dan Franz, Dan F at Chakenanalytics.com or 1-877-MY-PORTFOLIO. $1,550 a year for both our iPad and desktop app. So if you want to start investing smarter and trading smarter, subscribe to Chaikin Analytics. You get $600 in added value, $400 off the annual subscription. You get a complimentary subscription to Chaikin Power Suite that's worth $190 a year, free one-on-one -on -one tutorials to help you set up and use all the features, very important. We have a new feature which is subscriber call-ins, open forums twice a month where you can call in and ask questions, talk to our experts, hear what other people are doing with Chaikin Analytics, and then finally comes with Market Insights, that weekly newsletter that we've referred to with the bullish and bearish stocks of the week. Here's the Market Insights from two weeks ago, October 19th. Bearish stock of the week, Amazon 303.64. But we zeroed in on the fact that the stock would rally, and we said use rallies up to 315, 318 to sell the stock. If Amazon disappoints when they report, the stock's going to waterfall down. It rallied to 319 the day before earnings, and you saw what happened. Traded all the way down to 275 in the pre-market the day after it reported, which was Thursday night into Friday. So based on the Amazon trade from last April, we got this testimonial. I followed your Amazon trade, great trade, profit covered next year's total cost of our two months in Hawaii after taxes. And anybody who's been to Hawaii lately knows that two months in Hawaii costs a lot more than $1,550. This trader made over 45000 on Amazon puts about two weeks or three weeks after he started subscribing. So if he can do it, you can do it. This isn't Mark Jacob. I'm just the guide here. I'm like the tour guide. You can do it yourself. So subscribe now to Jacob Analytics. Pay only $1,550 if you subscribe by midnight Friday, October 31st. JakenAnalytics.com backslash sign up. Call Dan Franz at one eight seven seven my portfolio use the offer code VOLATILE or DANF at chickenanalytics.com. So with that, I'd like to thank Fausto, Rich, and the whole CyberTrader University team for making this such a seamless experience. And we're going to go into real-time desktop mode, and Fausto is going to ask uh, a lot of the questions that you people have been focusing on. So here's Chicken Analytics for desktop. I'm going to maximize it. So um, it thank covers you. the screen, and we'll uh, we'll let Fausto take over. For no you. problem, Mark. Um, hopefully, everybody can hear me loud and clear. Just a couple of questions coming across here, Mark. Um, first of all, a lot of people want to thank you for a great presentation. It's always been great to listen to you, and uh, once again, it's 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 a privilege to have you on. You know, I know with your busy schedule and so on. Uh, but a couple of questions coming across here. Uh, let me see. Does that work? All these stocks were uh, were above the cyber price range, meaning, you know, does this work for cheaper stocks? Well, the one thing that we do market here at Cyber Trade University is, you know, we, we kind of, you know, obviously being a lot of us are day traders, and, and there are some swing traders here in Invest. Some of the things we kind of focus on is uh, more, less expensive stocks, more actively top 20% gainers and losers. Would this work on, you know, on, um, 
know, stocks that range between the ten and thirty dollar price range, or this always has to be on a more inexpensive stock that you have to look at. Absolutely works. We looked at Brocade, which was a nine dollar stock. Here's Rite Aid. We have a five year chart on here with the power gauge at the bottom. The power gauge turned bullish on Rite Aid at the end of two thousand and twelve. The stock was a dollar twenty, went all the way to eight dollars with a bullish power gauge rating. Now it's had a personality change, so when we shift back to the one-year mode, the stock topped out. Look how the institutions were getting out of the stock. That's easy to know because the money flow is red, not green. Power gauge actually turned bearish for one week in July. This is a stock you needed to be out of, and you had a sell signal in Chaken Analytics right before a big gap down on negative earnings. So there's a four to one dollar stock went to eight. ARO, Aero Postal. In a steep downtrend, power gauge was bearish all the way from twenty mid twenties, and then the power gauge turned bullish. Now it hasn't been a dynamite performer on the upside because retailing stocks haven't been good, but absolutely works on lower price stocks. If you get into penny stocks, uh, stocks with less than a fifty million dollar market cap, no, it's not going to work on those. Well, could but you if you if you get into the small cap names, it absolutely works. Yeah, I mean, like for example, like one thing we were we were working uh, very uh, digitally on. I mean, obviously, you know, we we try to trade stocks that have a lot of action. Um, could you show really quick? Because one of the stocks that we've been we've traded very aggressively, um, which a lot of people are very familiar with, the Ebola stock. So could you bring up and just kind of give us an idea, like um, Lake, for example, how that would have helped us on your platform, L L A. K E. L A K E. Uh, they actually the ones that make the suits that protect the people from, <laughs> from the Ebola. Well, uh, everybody's going to think that we rigged this one, uh, Fausto. You got to give a disclaimer here. I never heard this name before. Uh, power gauge has been bullish all the way, going back for a year. Series of sell uh, buy signals, big money flow in here back in May, uh, June, and there was a a buy signal. Uh, here at about 870 on the way to this big spike up above, uh, well above 22. So um, here's a stock where the money flow, the power gauge, the relative strength would have gotten you into the stock here in late September for a huge uh, move. So uh, when the power gauge supports what you're seeing, that's like putting the wind at your back. It's fabulous. Beautiful. Any other names like that? Um, APT was another one was in the same industry. APT, the yeah. other ones that make yeah. suits. By the way, we have uh, power gauge ratings on 5,000 U.S. equities. Same thing, Alpha Pro. Now, I don't know what they do. So They actually I make the, the suits, Mark, that bullish. protect the people for the, from the Ebola, you know, the, you know, the, 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 the rubber suits. You know, that's so here's how you'd know. You click on this information button, it tells you what the company does. Disposable protective apparel. Right. Sounds like condoms to me, but apparently. <laughs> it's exactly right. <laughs> it, it controls infection in other places. Uh, for any women on the uh, webinar who are uncomfortable by that remark, I apologize. Uh, but you, all this information is at your fingertip. Now, if you, let's say you wanted to get more information we have research reports on 5,000 stocks. You can actually click on the power gauge uh, on the research button, and you'll get a four-page PDF research report on this stock with all the financials. So I can tell you that they did $44 million in revenue last year. It's not a bad uh, performance. Earnings are improving. Technicals are very bullish, outperforming the market. These research reports are available on demand on the screen on 5,000 stocks. So. Uh, let's show you a big name. Uh, let's take eBay. If you're interested in eBay, click over there, Power Gauge Report, and there you go. In the browser version, it comes up formatted perfectly. This is a new container version that we have. You can get all the taken intellectual property right from the screen or on the iPad. So you want to see this week's market insights and go back. Here it is. Market rebounds, large caps lead, and here's what the um, bear stock of the week was. It was Coach, 35.97, traded down to 33.20 today. So 
this is all available. It comes bundled with that 1550 price tag. One other stock, um, and I know you're busy, and I just want to give you one last stock before I let you go. There's one stock that I just basically tweeted uh, of stocks that I'm trading. I'm going to be focused on trading it tomorrow. Obviously, you probably heard, you're probably seeing it right now in the after hours, but let's look up Facebook. Facebook came out with some really bad news, and they're getting really destroyed. It looks like a short right now, and um, you know, I'm, going to be sh I'm shorting it actually right now. So tell me if you, if you could see anything. Does it work in after hours? And, and, uh, well, after hours uh, keys off, obviously, the technicals and then the earnings report. The power gauge was bullish, uh, outperforming the market. I actually I talked to John Najarian earlier today around 2.30, and he said, what's your feeling on Facebook? I'm going to put it up on our website. And I said I'm cautiously bullish on the stock. The reason being, I'm always looking for an edge. And Google and Twitter have been terrible market performers. So Facebook is in the same space. It's got a better picture, but it was up near that upper volatility band. But I looked at Google, which has been in a downtrend. And I looked at the action in Twitter after their earnings report. I mean, here's Google can't get out of its own way. Power gauge was bearish here, and then I look at Twitter. So I had to respect the bullish power gauge rating. Didn't know what the earnings were going to be. The initial reaction actually wasn't that bad. So if you're telling me it's getting destroyed, that's probably in re uh, response to their um, company call to analysts. Yeah, but I mean, they, they, Twitter. They, they were at 79. Now it's trading at 72. It's um, in after yeah. hours. Yeah, the, the initial reaction was only down about a point. You actually could have shorted that if you had access to liquidity in the uh, uh, post-session. But I looked at Twitter down 10% today. I looked at Google, can't get out of its own way. And I thought, i got to respect the power gauge. So I said to John, I'm cautiously bullish on the stock. And I think that was a good you know, point of view on the stock. You can't be spot on ahead of earnings every time. Uh, one other thing I want to show people, I follow, um, as I said, 106 stocks. So you might ask, well, how in the world can you do that? Well, here's how you do it. Portfolio Health Check. It's one of our three power suite services that comes bundled here. Four, a three-page PDF research report on any stock in your list or in any list in the system. Highlights the stocks with a bullish change in the power gauge or bearish tells you which stocks are reporting earnings, so you have an advance heads up. So we knew that Gilead was reporting, Coach was reporting, uh, all these stocks with bullish or bearish ratings. Later in the week, we've got Bidu, DreamWorks, which has had a bearish rating, First Solar has had a bearish rating, Charter, Cable with a bearish rating. So it gives you a heads up, and then this wonderful power grid. If you're trading from the long side, you want to be in the upper right-hand corner. These are strong stocks and strong industry groups. Do they all work out? No. Facebook was there, but so was Southwest Air, UNH, which has been a huge performer, Dr. Pepper, PepsiCo, Apple, Brocade. In the bottom left, this is the death zone. Weak stocks and weak industry groups. Stay away from them. Amazon, Groupon, Whole Foods, Elizabeth Arden, Microchip, which reports later in the week, and First Solar. So let's just end this by taking a look at First Solar, Fausto, because here's a stock that is classified as a semiconductor stock, even though most of their semiconductors go into solar panels. Power Gauge has been bearish since August. The stock has been a terrible performer. It was around 65. It rallied up above 70, but it collapsed, and now it can't mount a good rally with negative money flow. So you want to find any excuse in the world to sell this stock. And guess what? You just had an overbought sell signal ahead of the earnings that are due out on Thursday. That's a great spot to go short this stock. It was up three points today. You want to put on these trades as close as possible to the earnings report so the market has a chance to breathe. As I said, very often stocks rally with bearish power gauge ratings into the earnings report. It's part short covering and it's part wishful thinking. Wall Street doesn't give up easily on favorite stocks. It takes a lot to get them to do what they've now done in Amazon. So here's an interesting name to look at as a potential put buying opportunity tomorrow ahead of Thursday's earnings report. So with that, I just want to thank you again. Thank everybody for staying on. I noticed that most people stayed on through the offer and uh, 
Now, so I'll leave it to you to wrap up. No problem, Mark. Thank you so much for having me and everyone here. I'd like to thank everybody for taking the opportunity. And don't forget, tonight at 8 p.m., we have our options with Greg McDermott that's going to come on. So hopefully everybody gets an opportunity to come stick around for that. I know it's going to be a long day, but, you know, what, what we all know, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays are the most active and the most important days in the trading market. And I'd like to thank Mark for taking the time to be here. Look forward to having him here again. And, Mark, let me know when you're in town. Uh, definitely want to uh, – definitely love to uh, hook up with you and uh, – have a nice little New York, uh, New York strip steak with you one day. All right. Everybody else, once again, I'll see you all tomorrow in class. In the meantime, happy trading and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Fausto.